Danger, danger, high voltage. Those could be song lyrics, couldn't they? And if those lyrics were accompanied with some music and then made into a CD or an MP3 or some vinyl, you could play those uh, on one of your devices, be it your car stereo, an MP3 player, iPod, you know, record player, whatever it may be, um, and listen to it through some speakers or some headphones. So, what we're going to build tonight? We're going to build a Danger Danger High Voltage Plasma Speaker um, from, you guessed it, AliExpress. I got this kit through the post today. It cost me £5 delivered to the United Kingdom. And uh, I thought we'd do a little sort of open up the kit, have a look at it and do a real-time build because it looks like there's very few components in it. So, without further ado, we'll go ahead and do that. So, we'll pull out all the bits out the bag. And we do get some instructions uh, with this kit. However, I am not au fait with reading Chinese. Uh, so we've got the schematic there, a parts list, uh, which is in English as well. And uh, we do get some photographs which should aid with the uh, construction. We've got our PCB, which as always are, is fairly common, is a fairly good quality board. Nicely made, jewelry board. We get the coil itself. Um, oops, so there's some resistors in there. Um, yeah, got coil itself. So it's really fine um, enamelled copper. I believe it to be 350 tons on that um, former. You know that bit of plastic tubing. We get a little cheapo. I say cheapo. Well, gold plated. Uh, of course, that means nothing. Um, really thin, three and a half mil stereo to stereo. Uh, cable we get two fairly good uh, al aluminium uh, heat sinks we've got some thermal grease for said heat sinks and those go onto these two components here so we've got um, an 80NF70 which is a MOSFET and we've got a BD243C which is a power transistor Nice DC jack there, three and a half mil stereo jack, uh, little cap, two LEDs, LEDs if you prefer, four resistors, electrolytic cap, yeah, and some hardware, and a piece of wire, which will be our primary coil for the, the transformer essentially. So we'll just go ahead and build it. Um, as always, we will, um, what do you call it, do the lowest profile components first. So we'll do these ones first, which is brown, brown, black, black, which is 2K. And the, uh, the board is marked with the component values on it, which is always nice. Yeah, and uh, we'll just uh, chat about it while we go along. So, what does a plasma speaker do then? Well, uh, essentially, um, a conventional speaker uh, uses an electromagnetic field to move, you know, a, a cone in the speaker uh, using a magnet. So the coil is attached to the um, the coil is attached to the cone of the speaker, and that cone and coil basically travel in between a sort of magnet and a, a sort of space, uh, space if you like. And um, you know when the audio signal goes into the the coil, uh, obviously the uh, signal varies and um, varies the, the you know the the amount the speaker moves, the cone moves, and that cone moving or that uh, speaker moving. Um, moved or changes the air pressure and um you know that is translated into sound when it gets into your ear in sort of layman's terms um so what a plasma speaker does is it basically um does the same thing it varies air pressure but instead of using an electromagnetic field moving a, a paper or plastic cone it basically uses uh, plasma to do that and uh 
you know, it's quite an interesting concept for me at least anyway. So, I don't know how well it'll perform, um, but we'll, we'll certainly give it a go. And uh, we'll see, it should be quite interesting I think, he says. So I'm doing this, let's say, real time. So, if you want to see the end result, I'll put the comments at the bottom. Uh, or put in the silly description uh, the timing of where to go to see the end result. But it shouldn't take too long, let's see. It seems like a fairly straightforward kit to build. So that's just wicking through. Okay, so that's our resistors in. And we'll just trim the leads off, like so. And what we'll put in next, next lowest set of profile is the LEDs, I think. Um, and looking at the picture, we can see the red one is... Um, on the left here in the clear, whatever colour that may be, is on the right. Um, these have got a silk screen on here, shown as the polarity. So we'll just follow that and hope for the best. And that's need is on here. This actually came very quickly from uh, AliExpress as well. Normally you'd, you'd wait in a month or so for stuff, but this came in about just over uh, a week, actually. So, um, looking at the, the design, um, I think the operation, again, I'm going to be telling you in layman's terms, because as I've said many times before, I am by no means an expert. But my interpretation of the, the way this functions is uh, the audio signal comes into the board uh, by means of the, the stereo jack. Um, and basically... The, the transistor and the MOSFET are basically varying the frequency uh, in the primary coil and then the secondary coil is obviously going to generate that plasma um, so if we think the primary coil has got um, the primary coil is just one ton um, and the secondary has got 350 tons so this board um, I think if I remember rightly I'm going to be running at 24 volts. I think the maximum it can actually take, or sorry, the minimum it will take is 15. But we run it at the maximum, uh, maximum voltage it recommends, which is 24 volts. Uh, which means that, just using some basic maths, the primary coil of one, so 24, and then the secondary of uh, 350, we're looking at simple in order of eight and a half thousand volts. Uh, 8,400 volts so yeah we'll see how that goes but yeah so yeah it just comes in and uh let's see that there there's two uh the transistor and the mosfet will vary that and hopefully make it play music through nice purple plasma Okay, right, so what else have we got to put on here? Sorry, it does come with a neon lamp as well. That's for testing, I believe. Um, right, we'll put our uh, 3.5mm stereo jack in. And we'll just bend out of the just to uh, 
make the soreness a bit easier. In fact, they don't want to do that, so let gravity do the job. I'll just uh, put it in place using the weight of the board to hold it there. And we'll just turn up one of the, I'll solder one of the joints. And I will take that off, apply pressure to the, the connector, quick touch the iron, let it set, let it cool. And that's uh, the socket nicely located flush to the board. A quick visual inspection that looks fairly good. Put a little bit more in here. Right, DC jack and it just snaps. It's one of these snap fit ones. And we'll just solder that up. So, right, now the only other things we've got to put on here now are the uh, transistor MOSFET and the, um, what do you call it, heat sinks. So, what I think we'll do is, we'll certainly do one, one of the sinks first. Um, what we're going to have to do is, we're going to have to... Um, in fact, I'm in two minds what to do with this. In fact, we'll, we'll put the, the devices on first, actually. That'll be the easiest option, I think. So, get a little, uh, what do you call it? I think a thermal paste. If there's anything in here. Oh, there we go. And exactly the same as when you're doing your CPU and your computer. You don't need loads because the... Um, you know, device will spread that out when you when you put it on. He says as he's put lots and lots on there. <laughs> okay, so I'll just grab a screwdriver. And before we fully tighten that up, we'll just make sure that it does fit in the board okay. So that's the... Uh... See so yeah, that, that's going to go in there fine. So we can just give that a little, little tweak up. Like so. And the uh, heat sink will obviously, as it's designed to do, suck away some heat. So I'm just going to turn uh, my... Iron up. There we go. And that's, that's a nice job. And I will just do the leads now. Now it does recommend, if this is going to be run for an extended period of time, uh, that you um, use a fan to cool cool the devices, but we'll, we won't be running it for too long. It's like a dry joint. Yeah, that'll do it. Here the ricochets there, and we'll put our other. Uh, this is a transistor on now, and exactly the same process.
Let's see, that's going to work fine there. Perfect. Okay, right, so that's all our um, bits and bobs done. Um, final little piece to do now is clearly the, the business end, the coil. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, trim off the ends of this... Uh, oops trim off the ends of this uh, piece of wire which as I said is going to be our primary coil and we will install the secondary coil as well so I think it's probably going to be easier if we uh, first of all solder uh, one end of the coil in the primary that is so again, we'll just let gravity do its job here. And then we'll prep the prep the secondary. Right, so primary in. Trim the end off. And that's basically going to go round in a loop. And then into into here like so quite a tight fit around the the secondary so where is it the second call here it's here so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to um, hot melt glue this onto the the board because obviously it's not supported um, in any other way and there's a single tiny piece of like you see and like I said, uh, enamel copper wire, which is going to make that connection onto the board, so it's going to be fairly delicate. So I think, let's like say, hot melt glue will probably be the, the ideal um, candidate for uh, for securing this. If it's realistically, it's the only way we can secure it. Okay, so we will take this, and this will be a uh, this will be let's say the business end, if you want to call it that, and this will be the part that gets connected onto the board. So looking at it here, um, probably easier if I take it that way. And then bring the wire around. Okay, so got my hot melt glue that's been warming up. And if I just get my scrap piece of metal here. And what we'll do is I'll just uh, glue this on, I'll put the glue on, and I think I'll probably pause the video at this point. Just as uh, as that says, yeah. Okay, strike fast. Okay, so that's coil on. Let's see. I'll just pause now and wait for that to set. 
Okay, right, so that's the uh, hot glue set, and uh, w what I did whilst the video was off, I scraped off the, well what I did was I pulled through that really fine secondary coil through the hole um, onto the other side of the board, scraped it off slightly and soldered it on the top, and actually, sorry, on the bottom and actually the top as well, leaving just that tiny, um, tiny short piece going onto the PCB. And once that's, uh, now that that's done, I'm just going to put a little touch more hot glue over the top of that just to protect it and offer a little bit more um, support. And as you can also probably see, I've uh, fitted the, the hardware, the little standoffs, um, just because I thought it would be easier to do it whilst uh, that was setting. Okay, right, so we shouldn't need Mr. Glue on anymore. So I'll unplug that, and uh, the only thing left to do now, before we test the thing, is uh, put the primary winding on. So it simply goes around the top like that, around the side I should say, and then goes into this hole down here, so this might be a little bit tricky to get in. I think I'll probably use tweezers for this. <clears throat> and we'll just bend that over to secure it. And then we'll solder it on the other side. Okay. I'll trim that little bit of excess off. So, there we have it, our completed plasma speaker. Of course, the only thing left to do now is to test it. And I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't a little bit nervous. Um, I know it should be relatively safe, but yeah, you know. It could get a little bit tasty, a little bit exciting. Okay, so I've got a 24 volt power supply here. In fact, I will just um, give it a second to discharge before I connect it. Um, and we're also going to be using our really high quality Minions MP3 player. Because from what I've seen online, it says keep you know expensive electronic items out the way of it. Um, so yeah, I don't really want to be putting anything near it. So there's my power supply. Um, see how I can do this safely. I'll probably connect the um, audio lead to it just now. In fact, no, we won't. We'll leave it disconnected. So here goes power going in. Right, so it is working. Um, and I think it's probably going to be easier if I if I hold this insulated part here. If I tip it over to the side, hopefully you should be able to see that plasma just at the tip. Uh, and I'm relatively confident to put my screwdriver insulated screwdriver near it, so you can probably see that arcing on there. What I'll do is I'll turn the uh, the bench lights off and see what that difference makes. Okay, so it's it's actually you can smell it ionising the air. You, you can actually smell it. Um, yeah, pretty pretty impressive. But you can you can smell the air being ionised. It's yeah, a little bit weird. So what I'll do now is I'll unplug it and it instantly turned off and then we'll now try playing some music through it and see if it works so I'll be quite impressed if this actually works so generic Chinese cheapo mp3 player and we'll plug it in and see what it does 
So play, where's play? Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Now I can hear something, but it's very, very faint. What I'll do is I'm just going to pause and I'll do a little bit of experimentation and see if I can actually get it to make a noise. So bear with me. Right, um, the cheapo uh, MP3 player just isn't working. In fact, I know why it isn't working. Fail, yet again, another fail. I don't have a blooming SD card in it with some music on it. I took it out to use it in, a, in my Raspberry Pi, I think. <laughs> So that's why I've just realised and I picked up it's not working. So, um, I decided to use my iPod. Now, of course, I don't really like using royalty-free music on, on YouTube, but in this case, um, it's my favourite band, um, you know, and hopefully they'll welcome the, the exposure. And um, certainly it's been played not in its original form, but this is my favourite band. Not my favourite song, but you may know it. It is Divine Comedy National Express. So hopefully you'll be able to hear that. So that is, yeah, it's been played using plasma. How cool is that? Awesome. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. And there, if you don't believe me, there's the uh, iPod there with the album artwork. Go and plug straight into the device. And if I pause it here. Pretty cool. Yeah, really impressed with that. Sorry it's quite a long video, guys. Um, yeah, it's not, not ideal. Um, but yeah, I just thought it would be a really interesting little build, uh, which I think you'll agree it is. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. I really didn't think it would work, but it does. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, as always, please like and subscribe. Uh, nearly there in the competition. I should be drawing that either at the weekend, if not before. So if you've not already entered, please check through my other videos. Like and subscribe. Add your uh, comments. And uh, yeah, that'll do. We'll uh, hopefully have a winner soon. Take care, guys. All the best. So just a really quick bolt on video, guys. Um, I watched through my video and I forgot I hadn't actually uh, tested this little neon indicator. But I don't know if you noticed in the video when I turned the bench light off that there was actually visible smoke coming off this unit. Uh, whether it was just the chemicals burning off the heat sinks, I don't know. But the heat sinks were super toasty hot. So if you are going to run this for any length of time, you're going to have to put a fan on there to, to at least get some airflow over those uh, heat sink vents to keep it cool and stop the uh, transistor MOSFET from breaking down. So, without further ado, neon indicator, working plasma coil, and there we go. You should hopefully be able to see that that does light up from a good uh, three inches away there. And the closer you get, um, you know, the brighter it becomes. Quite interesting. But it got me thinking as well. I've just recently replaced all my lights in the house with... Uh, LED, so prepare for it to go dark. Uh, and I had uh, kept some of the old compact fluorescent lamps um, as spares. And if you watch this, there you go, it's actually working. And with this uh, larger one, yeah, it's actually uh, the plasma, the you know, the the field of energy that this has given off is exciting the, the phosphor particles inside these uh, fluorescent fluorescent light bulbs. Really quite cool. Yeah. 
never fails to amaze me electronics and and science but there we have it guys just a quick boat on vo uh, video let's try both of them together yeah cool hope you enjoyed that as always take care bye bye